Hi guys, it's Keith here. Now since Mike gave us all them nice headings uh, yesterday, I've been adding another site and like I've put another test site up and stuff like that, using one of the themes what he gave us a while ago. So I just thought while well, I was playing with like sort of generate press in the background, and I just thought I would uh, have a look at it and give people a little bit of an upside into what you can do with your headers yeah because you can have you know your site can be on page one position one but if you've got no calls to action on it you're not going to get any calls and you're not going to get any form fields or whatever you're targeting and that's one thing i see quite a lot when i'm looking at like sort of client sites and things like that you know you've given it to some like sort of web designer Web designers made an absolutely stunning website, it looks absolutely gorgeous, but there's no calls to action on. So even if you got on page one, you wouldn't be getting any work off it. <clears throat> so one of the things, obviously, that you want is you want calls to action above the fold, whether it's on a mobile or whether it's on a desktop, the calls to action you want to be there. So what I've got here is basically a header. And obviously you can see you've got the phone number up here, but then you've got a form in, inside the actual header itself. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, if we go into that one, I think. You will have to excuse this because it, it is a bit slow, but it's a, the actual host and I've got this on. It's the worst host ever. Uh, so this one, I'm just doing a different form, which is basically, you know, the full form and did it in white. Again, like I say, you can play with these with the different headers, what you've got. These forms are actually created by Lead Simplify, but you know, you can create them using things like um, formidable forms and what's the other one? It begins with a G, but I can't remember, I'll remember it in a bit. But basically, them forms will you have to pay for them because not only any of the forms will actually do like multi-part forms and um, straight out the box you will have to pay for them but you can do them in other ways but obviously i've got lead simplify so i'm going to use it because it makes life so much easier because as soon as the lead comes in and it's it's sold straight away then on this one all i've done this is a bit of a different one when the server decides to wake up is just put a button on. Now I know you've got that here, but I just thought I'd put the button on anyway. Because that up there is clickable as well. And these numbers and the clickable numbers, if you look down like sort of at the bottom corner, you'll see it says like tell or the same number. They are set up as an X field. Okay? So if for whatever reason Say I had this set up to a client's phone number, and then that client decided he don't want to pay us anymore. So then basically, I've now got to change the phone numbers. Instead of having to go through 10, 20, 30 pages to change the phone number, I change in one area and it's done. Yeah. So, plus also, when we get on to like the magic pages and things like that, if you have specific areas, like sort of, you know, if you've got like West Yorkshire's got a certain phone number. North Yorkshire's got a certain phone number. You can basically swap them out using your locations in like sort of X fields and stuff. So I always use X fields wherever I can because obviously that just makes life easier. Okay, so how did we do all this then? Well, first off, we've got a thing called elements. Okay, now the Actual sites, what you get off Mike, what the ones what we got previously, I don't know what these new ones are going to be like, so I haven't seen them yet. Um, let's just go back to generate press. Now, obviously, when these were done, generate press used what was called page headers. Okay, so if I click off. Uh, by deactivate elements, what you'll see over here is you now get a, a menu for page headers. Okay, and that's where their images are all stored 
And what you used to do is basically go in to a page when you do it and select which header you wanted on the page. Okay. Now, since them sites were made, generator press has moved away from that and has gone into what's called elements. Now, if I activate elements, then what happens is you'll lose this page headers. Now, when I did that, that took me a while to actually flat them out. Um, but when you go into elements here, because I clicked on that, and then of course these headers were coming up, I was like, I want to change the header, how do I change it? And I couldn't find it. But all your headers are under here. Legacy page headers. It's, you know, when you think about it, it's pretty straightforward, really. So that's all their headers as they stand now. Yeah. But these elements are what you really want to use because you can do a lot more with them. So if we go in and we have a look, as you can see, you can create multiple different headers and you can have them on different pages. Yeah, because like so this one just goes on the front page, that one only goes on the commercial, that one goes on the domestic, and that one goes on the magic page. Okay? Because the magic page, that one. on that one I've put both a header, uh, sorry, both a, a form and a button. Yeah. So where we are. So that's it. So if we have a look at the magic page one, it would be easy just to explain it all in one instead of. So like I say, you can go into these and you can put all sorts in, yeah. But you do need to know a bit of code because there's no drag and drop in here. But the code what you need is dead easy, okay. And like I say, you know, W3 skills, if you don't understand anything, you bob on to W3 skills and you will actually find out it's, it's there. Just type in W3C schools and basically it will teach you all about HTML and whatever you need to know. It's great for just finding little things out that you know you just want to do something. So we've all heard of like sort of H1 tags, H2 tags, H3 tags and all the rest of it. Yeah. Well this is what they are. Okay. I don't even like sort of, you know, if you're not used to this, you just use the WordPress and just use to click on the button and it automatically does it for you. And when you look in the, the text side of the code, you start having palpitations. Yeah. Well, it's dead simple because you have an open, the tag, and a close. Then there's stuff what you want in, and then you have an end tag. Every one of the tags has an end tag, okay? So you have, right there, H1, end tag, H1 start. Now all I've got in here is the alignment. If I change that to left, that will go left. If I change it to right, it will go right. Obviously you've got both centers, so I want the centers. The style, you can put all sorts of different stuff in there, but I've just got the color going in. Okay, again, if you go on W3Skills, you'll find out all the different stuff you can start. You can change the size of the font, you can change whatever. Yeah, this bit here, post title, is a short code, which are all over here. Dead easy. So then I've got H2. So open, H2. What I want to do with the H2, like my side and the align and stuff, these don't need to be in here. Okay, you could just do H2 on its own and you know it would just do whatever H2 is designed to do. Okay, then you have your content and then you have your end tag there which closes that H2 off. Because what the browsers do, they come down, they're reading the code in the page, they hit this H1 and they say, okay, this is an H1. They go at the CSS and find out what the CSS says about the H1. Then they read this and say, oh, well, he wants it centered. Oh, and he wants it white as well. Okay. So then what they do is they paste that bit centered and in white. 
Right, come next line. Oh, this is an H2. Find out the size and everything like that about H2 from the CSS. Oh, I want it centered. Oh, I want it in this color, which is like the orangey color. Okay, and this is what he wants printing. Oh, that's the end of the H2 now. I'll read down the next line. Oh, everything between this one and this one wants to be centered. Okay, so it knows now because it's going to find this before it finds this. So it knows that this wants to be centered. Now, this is the iframe which comes from Lead Simplify. Okay, so again, it's just the same. You've got your iframe here, your start. Then you've got your style and other stuff in here, which again, if you look on W3 Skills, you'll see what all the stuff you can put in. Again, there is some stuff you can put in, which is quite good for like your SEO and stuff like that, for other types of iframes. Then you've got your end tag. Okay. Now, like I say, this is just one of my, it's just a demo form, which I play with. You can change the height of it, you, know, you can change the width of it, whatever you want, you can play with it. Okay? So once the browser's come down, it's hit that center, okay, back to normal. Oh, BR, what's BR? BR's a break. It's the only, probably about one of the only ones which doesn't have an end tag because you've got the end one there. Okay? And um, basically, BR is just a break line. So it just says, okay, I want to do a break line. Dunk, make another line. And it hits the center again, says, okay, this lot wants to be centered. Then it hits this bit. Now, these are our links. We've all heard of like sort of you know, your height links and things like that. Well, this is how you do them. Okay. You start off with an A. Yeah. Okay. Then you have href equals. Now, most of the links what you guys will be aware of will have like sort of, you know, HTTPS equals blah, 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 you know, dot com. Okay. But there's other links what you can do like this one is tell. So basically when the browser reads that, it knows that if somebody clicks on that, if this is a button as it is, if somebody clicks on that button, then basically it wants to open up the phone. So on your computer, if you've got like sort of Skype installed or you've got um, Talk Time or any of them other things installed, it will open them up. Obviously on your phone, it will take you to your phone. The other one you can have, the popular one you get is mail. Okay, so in there you type in mail. That will automatically open your, your mail client on your computer or on your phone. But we are using tell for this because we want to be a phone number. So there's your X field phone number. Obviously, you know, that will get converted as if you go to here. You see down the bottom it's converted to audible three double one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, which means when I press that on my phone, it would come up as the correct number. Next, I want my button. So I've started with your know, button. Call it what class it is. It's a call now button, and I'll show you why, what this is in a minute. But then on my button, I want an icon for a phone. Which hasn't shown up for some reason. Oh, uh, I know that's in show because I haven't got um, the icons installed. Yes, that's why I hasn't show because I haven't got the icons installed on this one. Because I haven't got um, Elementor installed and stuff like that, so you need to actually install the icons yourself. And I haven't done that. Not to worry. That's an icon, okay, or an image, or you know, basically all you're saying is that's what it wants to be, and again, there's the end tag for it. Then I've got my text, which is call now, and I've got my X field phone number, end of my button, end of my A. 
end of my centre. And that's it. Yeah. So that basically is what actually displays that. No. That's my title. That's my second line, which is an H2 in the colour. There's my form, which is that bit, down to the next and down to here. And then here's my button. Okay. Like I say, you have to play with the colours and things like that, but you know you can work like sort of all that sort of stuff out. So then you come down to here because you've got all sorts of different stuff now. I've got that contained because that's what the actual site is. If I do set that as full width and do update. That will now, when it decides to, sometime this year will be good. Well, it's got a minute because that doesn't appear. Like I said, this server is absolutely rubbish. Right, try it again. So there, as you can see, that's now gone full width of the screen. Yeah, which looks a bit naff because the rest of the site is actually contained. Okay, so you've got to remember which ones which full contained. Other containers contains. You have your alignment left, center, or right. You can put pad name, which would basically, if you put the pad name, that would just make these move down a bit or up a bit. Um, now the background image, you can either have no background image, a featured image, or a custom image. Now I like putting it on the featured image because I can then change that image if I want to. Okay, so if I put a featured image on the page, it will then show up there. But when you do that, you have a fallback image, which is this one, which basically will show if there's no featured image yet. So if I forget to put a featured image on, it's there. That's the position of where you want the background, depending on the type of image you've got, you might want to center it in the top or you know, so that you get what you need in. That's whether you want to be parallax or not. Disable the featured image I always put on because obviously if I've got that featured image as the header, I don't really want it underneath as well. The background overlay, that's where you can put on different colours. Okay, so you select your background colour. You say I wanted an orange tinge. I can do that and then pull this down. And it's there. Put it down in case it's there and update it. Yeah, that's finished this time. So that's got like that on, which obviously, you know, makes the picture look naff, but you can see your stuff better. Like I say, you can play with like the tint and then stuff like that. So you get it so that it uh, looks nice on both of them. And obviously your text color, your link color, pretty self-explanatory. Side header is just if you want to actually merge it with the header. There, but this is going to be the header, so you don't really bother with that. Right, display rules. This is where you can actually decide where you want to display it. So I've got a magic page, all magic pages. I could put um, post, you know, whatever. 
pages. I could say all pages, or I can pick a page. Uh, and if I say all pages, what I can also do is exclude some. So I'm coming here and go um, exclude pages. Come on in. Uh, and I could say exclude the contact us page. Yeah, because I've got a separate one for the contact us page. So again, you can pick and choose where these will actually go. This is really good. Internal notes, pages for your own notes, just to say, you know, I'll create this because of your, and if you've changed anything, you can put notes in there. So that's like your headers, really. Now the only thing like sort of, you know, again, which you'll have to do is if you want to do these buttons as the classes, okay? Again, you know, people's probably gonna be like, having palpitations, thinking about coding and stuff, but it isn't that hard. Okay. Oh, one thing, um, I was wondering about this, up. One thing what I have done, which is good, plenty of spellings of locations on this page. Using the um, major locations there, uh, or major cities option, I've put, down in the bottom, other locations we cover include Salvi, Weatherby, Harrogate, Leeds, Wakefield, and Bradford. Now, Bradford, Wakefield, and Leeds are the only major locations, well, apart from York, which is the one I'm on, are the only major locations in, like, sort of, you know, this area where I've been, York and the Humber. But because York is close to Salvi, Weatherby, and Harrogate, I want them included, so I've just created them. Now, these are on the bottom of every page. And if I go to a Leeds page, Leeds will come up with your upborn. Yeah, so it's really, really good is that major city. Yeah, so again, this is just a bit of code. The same copy down there tells you that includes a copyright symbol. You just put a year in there till, and that's the current year. So that will, that will go every, Next year, that will say 2011 to 2019. Okay. Electrician Pro is just the name of the site. And then I've got my location and my zip code. And guess what? Every page I go in, that changes. If I go to Leeds, that will say Leeds, LS1, Wakefield, Wakefield, WF1. Da, 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 you know, as you're going through all the different ones, it changes. You know, to keep with GDPR, I've got a link to my privacy policy. I haven't actually got a page on there yet, but there you go. And then I've got the sitemap, which will actually show you like sort of what pages are on the site. So if we go back and have a look at additional CSS. So basically, this is stuff which like sort of the guys have put in. Um, underneath my stuff. In CSS, anything like that, with a slash and an asterisk, and an asterisk and a slash at the end, that's comments, okay? So you can comment stuff. As I've done there, because obviously I don't know what 1D3 AED stands for, but it's blue, okay? I'll just put a comment there in my buttons, just so I know what's going on. It's always good to comment your code, so you know what you're doing. So as I said, I've made this a class because it's got a full stop there. And I've made it call now button. Okay. And it says the background color is going to be blue. It's not going to have a border. It's going to have a border radius of 25 pixels. What that does is put the nice little curves on. Color, that's the color of the text is going to be white. Pattern's 20 pixels, so top and bottom will be all the way around actually be 20 pixels of pattern. The text is going to be centered. I'm not going to have any, it's not going to be bold or it's not going to be anything like that. That's the text decoration. I want to display in line. Font size is 16 pixels. And then I have a margin of four pixels, which is on top and bottom and two pixels, which is on left and right. And when I hover over it, I want the cursor to be a pointer. Okay, so if we go back to it. So there you've got it blue, and it changes to black. Okay. 
okay? So that basically is the color scheme. And that's all it is. Again, all of that type of stuff is in W3 skills you can find just by searching. Yeah. If anybody wants any of this code, like what I've got in there or this, then just let us know. I'll drop it in a, a tech document and stick it up in the file section and everybody can get all of it. So that's basically it, I think. I've done that. I've done that bit. Mm. Yeah, I think that's, every, that's everything I want to go through. Okay, hope it's been useful for you guys. Speak later. Bye.